Well, good evening, folks. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 24. This is Bill Breeden. Tonight we're going to go over one of the sky's most awesome constellations, and that is Andromeda, the princess. Andromeda is located in the northern celestial hemisphere of the sky, and it is best viewed from October to December. So it's an autumn constellation. So we have our Stellarium software set up for October the 15th at 8.13 p.m. I did discover something cool. Stellarium does automatically adjust for daylight saving time. So if I move this ahead one month to November 15th, it, it, it does adjust the time back to standard time. So I was wondering about that. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get started with, uh, with Andromeda and how do we find it. So if you're out in the autumn, you want to look in the east or in the southeast, depending on what time of night it is. And you want to start by looking for the signpost of autumn, and that is the great square of Pegasus. So let's have a look a little higher up. And you can see these four stars here. And one clue about the great square is that it is virtually empty. Uh, the four stars that make up the square um, are pretty much empty inside. I've got this set up for a suburban sky with moderate light pollution. So you see very few stars inside the great square. So once you've located the great square, look for a line of stars that come off of the great square that sort of form a giant version of the Big Dipper. So you've got a star here, and actually that's Murfak, that's part of Perseus. But you've got this line of stars here, and then you've got the great square here. So sort of does look like a giant dipper. The These stars here that form the handle are um, within the constellation of Andromeda. So that's, that's an easy way to find Andromeda. Another way to do it is to look for the W shape of Cassiopeia. And that's always going to be in the northern sky, either the northeast or the northwest, or sometimes Cassiopeia is due north. So in the autumn, the, uh, the part of the sky below the W is above the horizon, and that, that gets you to Andromeda as well. So this right around in here is Andromeda. So let's have a look at our constellation lines. And you can see here's the great square. And then here is the, the quote, handle of the giant version of the Big Dipper, and that is Andromeda. And you could even extend this handle a little farther all the way out to, to Murfak and Perseus. But then you're going a little far afield, so it's basically right here. Let's have a look at the boundaries. And you can see Andromeda does include the stars of the of that line coming off the great square of Pegasus. And Andromeda extends all the way up to the border of Cassiopeia. And then over here, it borders on Perseus. And also Pegasus and a few others. So this. This patch of sky here is Andromeda. So let's look at the mythical figures. And you can see here Andromeda is depicted right here, right between Cassiopeia and Pegasus, the winged horse. So Andromeda is right here. Okay, we can turn these off now. We'll go back to our natural sky.
Okay, the, the bright stars that make up Andromeda, let's start with the corner of the big of the great square right here. Now, although this one is used to form the great square, it's actually part of Andromeda. Um, it's uh, Alpha Andromeda, and it looks like it does have a name in Pegasus also. It's Delta Pegasi. So this one star here, it, it has designations within both constellations. Although if you look at the boundaries, zoom in a little bit, you'll see that Alpha Andromeda is actually within the boundaries of Andromeda rather than Pegasus. So it's almost like, let's see, let's go back out to naked eye view. It's almost like they wanted to include it in the great square, so it's got a second name of Delta Pegasi. So you've got Alpha Pegasi here, you got Gamma, you got Beta, so you got Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and then this one is almost like it's it's got an honorary name in Pegasus. I'm not sure how they how they give one star two bear names, but it does. So I, I refer to it as yeah, um, Alpha Andromeda. It's also called Alpha Rats. So that's kind of a cool name too. So the other stars that make up the the line of Andromeda here, you've got Delta Andromeda, Beta Andromeda, and Gamma One Andromeda, and it looks like that's a double star. And it's an easy to find one. Just come off the great square, follow the line to the the one, two, third star. The fourth one, if you count the corner. Not sure if you should count that one or not. So, Gamma Andromeda is also known as Almac, and it is a double star. So let's have a look at it through the finder. Let's see if we can split it. Almac is 350 light years from Earth, and it is a second magnitude star. You should have no trouble finding it and observing it from the suburbs, or even from a uh, even from the city. It's not too over light polluted. And let's have a look at it through through our Nagler, our 13 millimeter. Now it's not splitting yet, so let's see if we can split it ourselves. Oh, it splits into a pretty one. You've got a big gold and a and a slightly fainter bluish white star. That looks like it would be a great one to observe with a backyard telescope. And it's easy to find. So next time you're out and Andromeda's up, have a look at it. Okay, let's go over how to find Almac again. Find the great square of Pegasus, come off the shared corner star here, Alpha Andromeda, and go one, two, three more stars, and that would be Gamma Andromeda or Almac. Pretty easy to find. Okay, Andromeda is best known for three Messier objects, and they're all right together, and they pretty much don't need much of an introduction. Um, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, and then the two satellite galaxies, M32 and M110. So leaving our planetarium software here in the suburbs, if you look off of, if you look off of the second star here, the one, two stars off the corner, and look toward Cassiopeia, you can't miss this faint smudge in the sky. That is the Andromeda galaxy. So let's have a look at it from, and, and we're even seeing it here from the suburbs, naked eye, which is cool. Let's have a look through binoculars. Six degree apparent field. So you can see the Andromeda galaxy is large. It's this middle red circle is two degrees across. 
and the galaxy extends even beyond that. So it's about three degrees across, about the width of six full moons. Unbelievable. It's, it's, it's huge. So, and you can see, you can see the other two satellite galaxies, one here and one here. So, if there are any solar systems and planets with intelligent life somewhere in that region, and they're looking up at the sky, they're seeing a view not unlike ours. They're seeing a lot of stars in their own galaxy arms, and they're seeing the, the Andromeda equivalent of our Magellanic clouds. Okay, let's, let's look at Andromeda from a dark site. Let's make it dark. Oh yeah, don't you just love a starry night? Sometimes when I've been observing for a while through the telescope, I just take a little break and sit in my lawn chair at a dark site and just look up with the unaided eye, put my glasses back on, and you get a view kind of like this. I wish this could simulate it a little better, but it's, it's not bad. So you can see, you can see here, okay, let's use the lines. Here's the great square, and here's the line of Andromeda. And here is the Andromeda Galaxy, M31. So let's have a look at it through the finder or through binoculars from a dark site. And it's, it's spectacular. Now, from a reasonably dark location through binoculars or through your finder scope, you're going to see you're going to see an oval like this and you're going to see it pretty pretty large you're going to see it subtend out to 3 degrees but you won't see this detail that the program is showing you like these dust lanes unless you're at a really really dark site and you have a lot of aperture I'm going to say 16 inches or more to see this kind of detail but this gives you a really good idea of what the view of M31 and M32 and M110 would be through um, through a finder scope or binoculars from the dark site. Now, is there any point to looking at this through an eyepiece? Now this is simulating my lowest power eyepiece. It's a 24 millimeter pan optic with a 68 degree apparent field of view. And you can see the Andromeda galaxy just fills the entire field with part of it actually cut off. Um, this is not the view I get. What I, what I really see through, through that 24 millimeter pan optic from a dark location is a pretty bright smudge that goes out to about where my arrow is right now. So this is really giving you an idea that you're using a lot more aperture. It's not going to appear this bright and detailed, but this gives you an idea of what to expect. Let's see. See, this is the view through um, 10 by 42 binoculars from a dark site. I really like that view because you get a lot of background stars. So that's M31. Now, which galaxy is M32? I always forget which of those two satellites is M32. So M32 is the little one. That looks like it's inside the galaxy, and that leaves M110 to be this one above it. So let's go to about a one degree field. 
about like that. That that bright smudge, that is M32. That would be the equivalent of one of the Magellanic Clouds, the small Magellanic Cloud, as viewed from the Milky Way. This uh, M32 has a magnitude of 8. Now let's go back out for a minute. There's a lot to see here. Now since these are all actually related to each other in the sky, they're all about the same distance from us, um, 2.5 million light years. So you're seeing light that left that galaxy 2.5 million years ago. So you're seeing the galaxy the way it looked 2.5 million years ago. It is mind-blowing. It really is. So let's have Let's have the software point to M110, which is that other satellite galaxy. That would be like the Large Magellanic Cloud equivalent in the Milky Way. And let's look at that with about a one degree field of view. Now, I, I've never seen it look this bright with my 8 inch McCassegrain. But this is a good idea of what you will see through your telescope through a low power eyepiece. And it's showing the distance to M110 is 2.6 million light years. So apparently this satellite galaxy is sort of above and behind the Andromeda galaxy by about 100,000 more, actually closer to 200,000 more light years. So that gives you an idea of how wide. M31 is. So this galaxy is farther away. Gives you an idea of the depth and three-dimensional aspect of deep sky objects. Okay, so um, obviously M31 kind of dominates and the uh, constellation of Andromeda when it comes to deep sky objects, but there are a couple others. Um, NGC 752 is an open cluster. It's also on the Caldwell list. It's Caldwell 28. And it's uh, 1,500 light years from Earth. And it's sixth magnitude. So let's have a look at this open cluster through the finder. And it's really pretty. It's got some Nice double stars here close to it. Let's see. Let's see, I'm going the wrong way. And there's the view of, of NGC 752 through my 24 millimeter panoptic. I don't know if I've ever looked at that. I'm going to have to mark this down to do that next time I go out. Okay, I have another have another deep sky object here in Andromeda to share with you. It's a planetary nebula, NGC 7662. It's way up high in the constellation. Here's M31. Here are the the line of stars in Andromeda, and it's way up here. So let's have a look at NGC 7662 through the finder scope. And this one's also known as the Blue Snowball, or Caldwell 22. It's located 6,400 light years from Earth at 8th magnitude. And through my 24 millimeter panoptic, basically a low power wide angle eyepiece it just does look like a small blue little blue smudge there let's put a little bit more magnification on it oops there's a 19 millimeter panoptic and here's the view through a 13 millimeter nagler eyepiece it's really pretty i like that i wonder if this one would blink the way the blinking planetary does uh i think the blinking planetary is in Cygnus. 
So if you're looking for something similar in the autumn, try the Blue Snowball, NGC 7662. Okay, let's, let's go over finding Andromeda again here. This is set for mid-October, and we're looking east. Yeah, we're looking east. Find the great square of Pegasus. And even from a dark site, there's not that many stars inside it. And look for this line of stars coming off of the, the square. That's Andromeda. And Andromeda extends upward and over a little bit. So it's this where my arrow is. It's sort of this part of the sky here. There we go. So this concludes my tour of Andromeda, the princess. Good night and good seeing.